Herbert back in second. David Gary, please. Remain standing for the jury. Hey, everybody be seated, please. You may proceed, Miss Dugan. Thank you. I did. Okay, so the two girls, they shared a bedroom in the house, one with one room? It appeared to be so, yes, ma'am. Okay, and uh, 51A through B, the photos of these twins' bedrooms, did you have an opportunity to look at these before court? I did. And are they accurate depictions of how the girls' room looked at night? It was. Okay, looking at 51A, a little bright. That's a photograph I took standing in the hallway, facing into the, the twins' room. When you look at it on the monitor, do you get the same glare? Yeah. Okay. okay. I wasn't sure what you were seeing. Do you, do you see the pointer from the... Uh, no, won't go. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it's no problem. It's not her. I just was curious how that worked. So. And in 51B? That's again, it's a different angle, but it's showing the inside of the girls' room there, just kind of showing more inside of the bedroom. I looked it up on staff while mm -hmm. doing that. <laughs> um, all right, and it's 51C. Again, that's me inside of the bedroom now. I'm just trying to get all the different angles inside of the room to show how the house looked when I arrived. Okay, and the beds are pushed together in this room? They are. 51D is the opposite side, so now I'm standing against the window, and that's the closet in the twins' room. And this looked to be just the same type of staining on the carpet you told us about earlier, just from wear and tear? Yes, it was just kind of black and grayish colored. It just looked like dirt. And 51E? That's the, the, I guess, the dresser and the TV that was in the girls' room. That was one of the other TVs that were on in the room, in the home. Did you collect any evidence from the girls' room? I did not. We didn't locate any evidence of value from the twins' room. Did you find any suspected blood in the twins' room? No, ma'am. So no swabs were taken? No, ma'am. Okay. I want to move on to Javante's bedroom. Um, did you have an opportunity to look at the photos 52A through G of Javante's bedroom? I did. And are they accurate depictions of how his room uh, looked on November, um, on the day that we processed it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Looking at 52A, what do we see here? This is, again, I'm standing in the hallway looking into Javante's bedroom. And in 52B? I just took a picture. It has his name on a sign outside of his bedroom door, so I, I just documented that. There were several areas of suspected blood that I located on the outside of Javante's bedroom door. So you can see in, in here, this, these were the areas that I, I was photographing to show that there was suspected blood all, all along the door. 52D. is a closer up picture of that same door. I've put evidence scales in there to show the items of evidence that I'm going to collect the suspected areas of the blood, the swabs that I took. Let me show you this other one as well. In 52E. That's the, the side of Javante's door. It's the door frame. So essentially here, this is where the door would close into. So you can see that there are suspected blood spatter along the door frame, but not at all where the inside of the door frame was. Okay, and did you um, swab all of the suspected blood that you saw on his door and door frame? Those areas that I marked, I, I did collect swabs of those suspected blood areas. All right, I want to turn your attention to the state's exhibit 53 through 55. I'm sorry, 56. Yes, ma'am. What are 53 through 56? Can you read out each one of those for me? Yes, ma'am. State's 53 is a swab of the suspected blood from the exterior of Javante's bedroom door. States 54 is another swab of suspected blood from the exterior of Javante's bedroom door. 55 is another swab from the same area, and so is 50, 
oh, I'm sorry, 56 is from the south door frame. I apologize. Okay. This is just me documenting the inside of Javante's bedroom. So if you can see, I'm sorry, I didn't realize you can't see the pointers there, but there's a, down here is, is the actual door frame area. So this is just directly inside of the door of Javante's room. And it's just documenting the items I noticed on the floor. Unit 52 G. Is another angle going out onto the, looking through the door into his bedroom as well. Okay, so there's one bed located in the bedroom, the one with the cheeks here? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Did you collect any items of evidence uh, from the bedroom besides the swabs from the door and the door? <coughs> no, ma'am, there's nothing inside of Javante's bedroom that I collected. All right, um, we're going to look at 57 A through H, the photos from the, the hallway bathroom and the common bathroom. Yes, ma'am. And were those uh, accurate depictions of how the bathroom appeared um, on the day that you processed it? Yes, ma'am. What do we see in 57A? This is a, a look inside of the the hallway bathroom, there's an area of suspected blood that I located on this carpet right here that I'm documenting, just looking into the bathroom area. What do we see in 57 B? This is the outside of the door frame of that hallway bathroom and there's suspected blood areas here that I noticed that I was documenting. Did you swab that suspected blood? I did, yes ma'am. Looking at your common bath notebook, it's going to be the first sleeve. So what is State's Exhibit 55? It is that swab of the suspected blood from the exterior door. Okay. Green. And looking in that same notebook, what is State's Exhibit 59? 59 is a swab of the suspected blood area from that rug. And can you point out to us if there's the laser room that would be? Yes, ma'am. It's right here. What do we see in state 57? This is a photograph that I was taking inside of that hallway bathroom. So you can see the sink and the toilet seat and the bathtub area. Okay. Did you take any swabs of the bathroom sink faucet? I did, yes ma'am. I actually took a swab of the faucet handle of that sink. is a swab of the sink faucet handle. Okay. And so that would be, how did you swab the sink faucet? It would have, I'm sorry, you can kind of see it better in the mirror. So it was just one of those single handle ones. So I would have gone on the top and underneath it as well to cover the entire handle with a swab. So you're trying to cover all the areas that the person would touch if they touched that. Yes, ma'am. This is just showing the scene as I saw it when I entered the bathroom of the home. And it shows the children, I'm sorry, in the bathtub. Okay. In 57E. Is a closer picture of the children. As we saw it, um, you had Tamaya, you can see her on top. Javante is towards the end, and then Tanaya was underneath the other two. This is a picture of Tamaya's left hand. Um, there's kind of a, I don't know if it's like a soap rack, but it, her hand was the only part of their body that was resting outside of the water at the time that I arrived. <laughs> so I was documenting that section of her hand because I collected a swab of it. Um, and I want to turn your attention to State's Exhibit 60. What is State 60? It is a swab of the left hand of the child with white sandals. Um, and so that, that's the left hand that you swabbed? Yes, ma'am. And how did you swab her hand? It was, it's with the same, the same way that we do the swabs for the suspected blood. I just took the, the entire 
um, upper portion of her hand because it wasn't in the water, so it could have retained, we, we'd hoped it would have retained some kind of evidence. When you labeled her swab, um, you said the, the child with the white sandals. Um, were you able to, I guess you weren't able to swab any body parts of any of the other children in the bathtub? No, they were all wet at the time. And because they were wet, did you, um, they're very unlikely to get any DNA from their, from their hands? Yes, ma'am. I want to go back to choose 57D. Did you swab any areas um, from the faucet or handle portion of the bathtub? Yes, I did. The actual faucet and the handle portion. Okay. Um, can I turn your attention to 662? What is 662? 62 is a swab of the bathtub faucet handle. Okay, so that would be this upper portion right here? Yes, ma'am. And you swabbed it in the same manner that you did the sink handle? I did. The sink faucet handle? Okay. Um, what about state 63? What is 63? 63 is a swab of the grab bar in the tub. Can you show us what a grab bar is? I'm not sure if that's what it called, but that's what I called it in reference to my evidence collection. So that's what I believed it. You'd grab onto it. Okay. What do we see in 57D? 57D is there was suspected blood that I located on that bathtub wall area. So I have my evidence scale in there showing the area that I was going to collect a swab of. Okay. And do we see kind of an up-close photo of the grab bar here? You do. Yes, ma'am. And where did you swallow the grab bar? The entire area of the grab bar. Okay, looking at your um, notebook, what is state 63? 63 is a swab of that grab bar. What do we see in 57H? It's a, a mid-range picture of me getting closer into that swab of, or that area of suspected blood I located in the bathtub. Okay, and what is state 63? 66 is the swab of that suspected blood. Did you take any swabs from the toilet in the bathroom? I did, yes, ma'am. Okay, looking at state 57C, is this the toilet you swabbed? It is, yes, ma'am. What areas of the toilet did you swab? I swabbed the area right here um, because, as a girl, the, the seat is generally down, so I... I assumed to lift it up, that's generally the area you would use to, to lift that bottom seat up. So I just swabbed the section. I'm sorry. I just called it a lift area, the section that you would lift up that part of the toilet. And I also swabbed the flush area, the, the handle to flush the toilet. Okay. And looking at your notebook, the state 64, the swab of the, the bottom lift area of the toilet seat? Yes, ma'am. And 65 is the swab of the toilet flush handle? Yes, ma'am. I did, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am, I did. Okay. Um, what areas of that handle did you swab? The entire perimeter of the area where you would grab to turn the door. Did you do both the interior and the ex exterior? I believe so, yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, looking at your notebook, what is state exhibit 67? 67 is a swab of the exterior door handle. Okay, so the side leading to the hallway? Yes, ma'am. And then what is 67? is a swab of the interior door handle, the doorknob. Okay. And then did you also uh, swab the light switch of the, of the bathroom there in the hallway bathroom? I did, yes, ma'am. Okay, and what is the exhibit of 69? 69 is a swab <laughs> of that light switch. Okay. All right, at this point, I'm going to move on to the living room. Let me get some your notebooks away and get one more.
right. Did you have an opportunity to look at state 70A through UUU? This would be the photos of the living room um, and exterior of the home? Yes, ma'am, I did. And were they accurate depictions of how they looked when you processed it that day? They were. This is actually, I'm standing in the dining room area and I'm taking a picture of that lamp. So that's the living room in front of us and the hallway is to the right. This is the, the lamp that we saw from the hallway where you swab the light bulb? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And in 70D, what do we see here? This is another angle looking in towards the living room. So you can see that, that side of the living room in the home. is another angle now I'm just in the back corner and I'm looking down the hallway in the living room area another angle of that living room in 70 e I located on the drywall there was an area There's an area, an indentation in the wall here. I'd also located a projectile in the living room area as well. So I believe that this indentation was made from the projectile. And in 70F? Is another angle, it's a side angle view of this window area in the living room, so this was the, the far left window, and this was the indentation here. Okay, it's now a photo where I put a scale in it to show the size of it and the shape of the indentation. And 70H. That's the projectile that I located. It was just off of the wall on the rug where that indentation in the wall was. It's right here. It does. Okay. And so this shot, you said, would have hit the wall, created that indentation, bounced off the wall, and landed here on the rug. That's what it appeared to do. Okay. Looking at 70 I. This is another shot from the living room. Essentially, I'm standing right at the end of the hallway looking into the living room. So you can see the living room, and that's the front foyer area, that front door. The projectile that landed on the rug, did you impound that projectile? I did, yes, ma'am. Okay, um, looking in your living room notebook, first, please, what is State's Exhibit 71? It is the projectile that was located on the rug. And that would have been, correct me if I'm wrong, over, over here closer to this wall. Yes, and that where you're pointing is where the indentation was on the wall. And then that edge of the rug area right below it was where the projectile was located. And the projectile that states exhibit um, 71 almost even with the edge of, of the couch closest to that wall? Yes, ma'am. Just wanted to give us some reference. All right, looking at 70J, what do we see here? Um, there was, this is a photograph of the couch in the living room that's looking right towards the front door area. I located um, suspected blood on the couch cushion here, and there's also, there was a tree, uh, it was a, a fake tree, a potted tree that had been toppled over, and you can see part of Brandy Peter's legs here in the front entry door. is another image kind of facing towards the front door. I'm also getting closer into the couch area where I located the suspected blood, and you can also see multiple areas of suspected blood throughout the house. Or, I'm sorry, the living room and the foyer. What about in 70L? Is That's a closer-up image of the suspected blood areas I saw. It was difficult to photograph because it was black leather and, and the blood was a dark color as well, but you can... See this area here is, is what I was looking at. In 70M, 
did you put a scale on in that area? I did. All right, looking at 70 in, is that an up close view of the scale next to the suspected blood? Yes, ma'am, it is getting closer in on that couch cushion. Did you swab that area of suspected blood? I did. Okay, looking in your notebook at state 72, can you tell us what state 72 is? It is a swab of that suspected blood area. All right, what do we see in 70O? In 70O is the other side, another angle of the living room area. I'm actually standing in the dining room kitchen area looking out towards the, the living room, and this is the front door foyer area. And 70P? Is me just kind of turning towards my left as I'm taking the, the photograph, so now you can see more of the foyer area, and you can see Brandy Peters where we found her. is the other side of that foyer area and here would lead into the kitchen and the garage so I'm just on the other side of the and I'm standing in the living room essentially now R. is more photographs of the the all the blood spatter that we saw in the front foyer area Is a photograph of the carpet area just outside where Brandy's body was located, and you can see all of the areas of blood that, that I or suspected blood that I located in the carpet area as well. What do we see here underneath this uh, piece of hair? There's a red shovel. This is actually you were right. This was a, a piece of hair, and there was a red shovel here, and this was the plant, uh, the tree area that I, I mentioned from the other view of the living room. And did you collect the red shovel? I did. Um, did you process the red shovel? I collected a swab of the handle of the shovel. There did not appear to be any suspected blood on it at all. It was just odd that it was so close to her body at the time, and we weren't sure what her injuries, the extent of her injuries at that point. show you um, what's been marked and stipulated as State's Exhibit 76. Would you mind using your gloves just to take that out of the packaging? Sure. <coughs> Does that appear on almost be like a child-sized shovel? It does. It's, it's a very small shovel. Okay. Um, and you swabbed the handle of it, you said? I did this handle area of it. Okay. And it has some dirt on it? It does. Okay. That's all. Thank you. It's a swab of the handle of that shovel that I just showed you. Okay. What do we see in 70T? This is another picture of the foyer area after we had removed Brandy Peters' body. is the top portion of the foyer area above the front door. I was documenting the, the blood spatter area that still it, it went as high up to that window. So I was trying to document all the, the areas of the blood. You mentioned moving her body. I wanted to go back to that. Um, did you uh, move her body as well as the other bodies in the hall? We did. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and how was that done? Um, very carefully. The, the children, my... Former supervisor Joanne Maltese at the time was in the bathroom with myself, so the two of us removed the child, the children, um, one by one from the tub and photo documented them. Um, they were placed in evidence body bags, and I evidence taped and sealed those body bags, and they were later brought into the garage where um, investigator April Wilder 
or Dubrava at the time, she stayed until the funeral home to, came to take the children and Brandy away. For Brandy, it was forensic specialist Henderson and myself. We took her out of the foyer area and placed her in a body bag in the dining room area. Um, as to avoid, we didn't want to process any part of her body while we were in that area because we didn't want to disturb any of the evidence while we were doing it. Okay. Um, after she was placed in the body bag, was it sealed and did you actually attend her autopsy? I did for Brandy, yes ma'am. Okay. Um, going to step 70W, um, is this a photo of the blood spatter on the front door and towards the top of the door towards the window? Yes ma'am. Okay. On 70B, what do we see here? That's also the front door, and you can see the, the areas of blood on the bottom of the door as well, and the side wall uh, of the foyer showing the blood there as well. Okay. 70U? It's still the same foyer area. I'm just documenting all of the different areas I can where the blood was, the suspected blood was located. Okay, and, then, and this was after she was removed? Yes. Looking at 70X, what do we see here? This was a large area of suspected blood that was located in the carpet from the other overall picture I took. So I was just zooming in here to show that I collected a swab of that large area of the suspected blood. Okay. Um, were you able to swab every drop of blood in this entire living room area? No, ma'am. How did you go about trying to, um, or selecting the areas to process or to swab blood? Uh, well, we determined, we, we just selected different, from the large area sections, we believed that because of the extent of the, the injuries to Brandy, the blood was hers. So we, we picked areas on on every part of the wall and also the carpet area here. So you can see that there's suspected blood areas around it as well. But we picked just one specific area to take those one swabs in each different area in the home. So trying to swab one uh, spot from each area. Yes, ma'am. Gotcha. Okay, so here in 70X, um, did you swab the suspected blood in this photo? I did. Okay, and I want to turn your attention to state 73 in your notebook. Yes, ma'am. What is state 73? It is a swab of that area of suspected blood. Okay, and state 74. What do we see in, seven, in uh, photo 70Y? It's another larger area of suspected blood that I collected a swab of. You can see that it's right at the edge of the foyer on the carpet area. And is the swab that you took of that suspected blood, is that state 74 in your notebook? It is, yes, ma'am. Okay. What do we see in photo 70Z? This is another area of suspected blood that I took a swab of, but that's actually on the tile in the foyer area after we remo had removed Brandy's body. Looking in your notebook is the swab of that suspected blood on the tile, is that state exhibit 75? It is, yes ma'am. I'm standing in the kitchen area taking a photograph of the foyer area and Brandy was still in the foyer at the time. This is a photograph after um, Joanne Maltese had done leukocrystal violet. It's a, a dye that stains for hemoglobins in, in the blood and she'd use a stain which turns it violet, a violet color and I was documenting um, what we saw after the, the dye was used. Is another photo just showing more of the carpet area of what was seen after we did the leukocrystal violet. Is this a protein in the blood that makes it turn that color? Essentially, yes. Okay. What do we see in 70 BB? This is the inside of the front door to the home, and I had processed this door for latent fingerprints, and this is the powder, the, the powder that I'd used, so it turns it a black color, it's bichromatic powder. And so I put a scale in here to show that there were, there were images that I, I'd noticed that there were latents developed on that door. Okay, did you see whether these latents were, did you process them and see if they were of any value? 
uh, they were determined not to be a value. So I did process them with the powder and I took photographs and I lifted them, but they were determined not to be a value for comparison. Okay, so you couldn't compare them to the one? No, ma'am. So if a, finger, if a fingerprint or a handprint is, is too smudged, that can cause you to, to not be able to make a comparison on it? Yes, ma'am. Okay, but you did photograph it? I did. And what was the purpose of putting the leucocrystal violet? Uh, Joanne Maltese did it. So I you have to ask her. Lost it. All right. So looking at 70 PE, what is this? These were just kind of pattern images that came up after using the Leuco Crystal Violet staining. So because I wasn't sure what it was, I, I documented it with a scale. It appeared that it, it might have been maybe some kind of boot print or some partial kind of shoe print. So we documented it to, to be looked at at a later date. And this is kind of away from the significant area of the blood closer to the wall up there in the foyer? Yes, ma'am. Okay. What do we see in 70 FF? These are other kind of just stained impression areas that came on the carpet that, that you hadn't seen before. And just because of the patterns of them, I thought that they were odd, so I was documenting that as well. So anything that contained protein in the carpet might have been illuminated violet that you didn't previously see? Yes, ma'am. Okay. What did we see in state 70 DG? These are just other evidence markers after we'd removed Brandy's body of, of items of evidence that I'd located and collected inside this foyer area. Okay, I'm going to go through each one of them one by one, starting with the one closest to the um, right side there. In yes, ma'am. Okay. I'm looking at 70 H. Um, it was a, a section of gold teeth that I located on the floor there that I photographed and collected. Is this an up-close view of the teeth? It is. Okay, did you um, impound the teeth? I did. And are they made of, it looks like it's made of metal? It, yes, it was some kind of gold-colored metal. All right, looking at um, State's Exhibit 78 in your binder, what is 78? 78 are those metal teeth. So I located another um, gold bubble type earring that was similar to the one in the master bedroom area. And this here was an acrylic nail that I located on the floor. Okay, and this is going to be closest to, this would be the door leading to the outside of the house, the front door, right? Yes, ma'am. That's a close-up picture of that gold hoop earring that I, I was I mentioned earlier. And in 70 LL is a close-up image of that nail. You can see it right here. All right, looking in your binder at 79 and 80. What are 79 and 80? 79 is the gold earring, the gold-colored earring, and 80 is the fingernail. All right, looking at 70. These are the, I added scale, so these yellow colored, this is taped scale, so it's just a measurement. Um, when blood spatter analysis is done, they generally do, the, they need the measurement to know how tall and how high and wide everything was in the room. So we documented that entire foyer area because it had so much spatter along all of the walls in case it needed to be sent off to a blood spatter expert at a later date. So because we don't generally ever get to keep a crime scene for a very long period of time, we had to document everything because we were going to lose it later. So this was documented in case anything needed to be done later to that foyer area for spatter documentation purposes. Did you process the, um, the door handle on the front door? I swabbed it, yes ma'am. Okay. Did you also process the, the deadbolt? Yes ma'am, it was swabbed as well. Okay, can you turn to 81 and 82 in your notebook and tell us what those items are? Um, 81 is the swab of the interior front door handle, and 82 is a swab of that interior deadbolt. All right, looking at 70 in, in, what do we see here? This is one of the sections of the foyer wall that had the, the tape 
the measurement tape, I'm sorry, I was trying to think of the word, um, markings in it, as well as showing the blood spatter areas on the wall. Okay. And what about 70 TTT? <coughs> this is one of the blood spatter walls as well in the foyer, and it shows a scale where I collected a swab of suspected blood from that wall. That's the, yes, the close-up image of the swab that I was collecting, or the suspected blood, I'm sorry. And the swab of the entryway wall, is that 83 in your notebook? Say it's 83? Yes, ma'am. All right, looking at the interior front door, 70 TT. What do we see here? This is showing a scale, my evidence scale as well, of the area of suspected blood that I was going to swab from the front door area. Okay, so you see a, a front door that has pre-concentrated with all the blood spatter, so this is the area that you swabbed that you saw a significant portion? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and looking at in your notebook, mm -hmm. state 84, is state 84 the swab of, of the suspected blood on the front door? Yes, ma'am. For your reference, I know you probably can't read that from here. This would be your item 139. Okay. What, is one, what, is, what are we looking at in this photo? This is another, this is the west side wall of the front entryway. And this was a swab from that wall that I was taking of suspected blood. Okay, and this is 70RR. And in 70SS, what do we see here? We're getting closer into the image of the swab that I was collecting. And what about here? That's a close-up picture of that suspected blood. In your notebook, what is State's Exhibit 85? Is a swab of that suspected blood. This is the front door to the home, the exterior of the front door to the home. Did you swab the exterior portion of the door handle as well? I did. In your notebook, what is State's Exhibit 90? Is a swab of the exterior front door handle. And it looks like she has um, kind of like a little front porch here. It is, yes ma'am. Another image of the front door? This is. This is another image before the, the lupal crystal violet was applied to the front door. What do we see in 70 WW? I took a photograph. This is the bottom, the, the walkway into the front door, and there was suspected blood on the outside of the home as well in that front area. And I was documenting that. Okay. What do we see in state 70XX? It's showing where I'm collecting a swab of a suspected blood area that's on that front door. You can see my evidence scale. It's kind of dead center in that door there. And in 70YY? That's a closer up image of the swab of suspected blood that I was going to collect from that area. Is a swab of that suspected blood area. On the exterior front door? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Looking at 70 CZ, what do we see here? That's the, the front entryway, the, the walkway area that I'd showed in the previous pictures of the suspected blood, and this was the area that I was swabbing. Okay. And did you take a swab of the suspected blood here? I did. And in your notebook, is that state exhibit 92? Yes, ma'am, it is. In the front entryway? Yes, ma'am. Okay. What do we see in 70S? 
70 AAA. This was the front door. It's the outside of the front door, and it's showing the application after the leucocrystal violet was applied to it. So I was documenting the results from the leucocrystal violet. is another just angle from that front door. It's looking onto the siding. We located um, suspected blood spatter outside on the siding area as well. So that's the that yellow tape documentation that I'd done similar to that in the foyer. What are we looking at in 70 CCC? What area? That is that siding area. So if you're facing the front door, it's directly to the right of you was the siding wall. And that's where I located the suspected blood spatter. So that's my documentation there and a scale of where I was intending to collect a swab of that suspected blood. A closer view of um, your scale and the suspected blood? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Looking in your notebook, can you tell us what state exhibit 93 is? Is a swab of that suspected blood area. So this is a the suspected blood spatter that I located on that exterior siding area, and there was some kind of blood spatter documentation that had been made by Joanne Maltese there. So those are the lines and the markings that you're seeing there. And you said uh, Maltese was your supervisor at the time? Yes. Okay. It looks like these pictures are, are pretty bright. Was this taken the next day? Uh, it was the two days after, so it, it, it was on the 22nd of November. This is a photograph um, from standing back towards the garage entry door facing into the kitchen area of the home. In the photos of the kitchen 95A through E, you had an opportunity to look at them before court? I did. And they're accurate depictions of how they looked that day? Yes, ma'am. All right, looking at 95B, what do we see here? This is the island area of the kitchen. I just moved over a little bit further, and I'm standing inside of the garage now taking that picture. And 95C? Is the trash can in the kitchen area. I'm standing now inside of the kitchen and taking a picture out into the living room and just showing the island area of that kitchen and the dining area as well. Final photo? It's just a different angle, so you can see the garage entry door is right there, and it also shows the, the front entry foyer area into the dining and living room areas of the kitchen. I did. Okay. Can I refer to my notes? I'm sorry. Oh, yes. Well, let me first ask you about the foam plug insert. Um, did you swab that? I did. Okay. And what about the, the faucet, uh, the, the faucet sink? I swabbed the handle, the hot and cold handle of the faucet sink in the kitchen. Okay. So both handles? Yes. I believe it was just one handle that went hot and cold. Okay. I don't and can you, oh, I see it. So can you show us in this photo the areas that you swabbed? 
I don't recall where the phone jack was, so I see that there's a section here, but I don't want to be misspoken. I know I would have taken up like a, a different photo, a close-up photo, but there was a phone jack in the kitchen, and there was a corded phone, but the jack had been removed from it, but there didn't appear to be any damage to the jack at all. I just took the swab as a precautionary measure. And then the faucet here was the, the handle that I swabbed where you would lift up to make the water hot or cold in the sink. I'm looking in your notebook. Um, our state exhibit 96 and 97, those swabs. I'm sorry, you took the notebook. Oh, I'm sorry. Here we go. That was it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the next one is looking at that notebook. Yes. Do you see exhibit 96? Yes, ma'am. What is 96? It's a swab of the kitchen phone plug insert into the wall. So what about 97? is a swab of the kitchen faucet sink handle. Okay. You see in one of these photos that there's a disposable camera on the counter. This is a 95B. What did you do with that disposable camera? I collected it as evidence. Okay, and do you have it there in front of you today at State Exhibit 99? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and are the processed photos from that camera in there as well? Yes, ma'am. Did you have an opportunity to look through those photos before court today? I did. Okay, was it, is it mostly photos of Javante playing in the yard? It is. Okay. All right, so you told us that you attended the autopsy. I did. I'm going to just take a second to shift some of our evidence around and bring the autopsy evidence up to you. Yes, ma'am. Judge, may I go back here? Sure. Thank sure. you. All right, so um, we're going to see the photos uh, that were taken through the medical examiner. I just want to talk about the items that you collected from the, from the autopsy. Yes, um, did you take uh, scrapings of Brandy Peters' uh, fingernails? I did. Okay, can you tell us, or um, I want to turn your attention to the notebook in front of you, um, 103A through J. I'd like for you to walk us through which, what each of those items are. And also just tell us in general how you scrape a person's fingernails. Okay. Um, so we were provided, it's basically a wooden stick for, for women that do manicures. You may understand it. It's, it's kind of like a flathead screwdriver on the end. So it's angled so that it can get under your nail bed and we scrape along through your nail. So what I would do is scrape that area. Each individually I did, in this particular case, every finger, fingernail I did with a separate scraper and then itemize each single one as a piece of evidence. Okay, and did she also have acrylic nails as well as natural nails? She did. Do you scrape acrylic nails in the same manner that you scrape the natural nails? You do. It still just goes underneath the nail into below your nail bed. Okay, can, can you walk us through 103A through J and tell us what, what each of those items are? Yes, ma'am. 103A was the scraping I took of her right thumb. 103B is of her right index finger. 103C is her right middle finger. 103D is her right ring finger. 103E is her right little finger. 
103F was her left thumb. 103G is her left index. 103H was her left middle. 103I was her left ring. And 103J was her left little. Did you also take swabs of Brandy Peters' neck? I did. Okay, what is State's Exhibit K in your notebook? I'm sorry, 103K. Is a swab of the left side of Brandy Peters' neck. Okay, and what about 103L? Is a swab of the right side of her neck. Did you also swab her hands? I did. What is 103M? Is a swab of the back of her left hand. And 103N? Is a swab of the palm of her left hand. And how do you swab her, her hands? How did you do that? So in this particular case, it was the same way where I used the large Q-tip and the, the vial of the, the sterile water, and I just used the entire, for the back of her hand, I swabbed the back of her hand, and for the palm, I swabbed the entire palm of her hand. Okay. Looking at 103O, what is 103O? Is a swab of the back of her right hand. And what about 103P? Is a swab of the palm of her right hand. Okay. Um, what is 103Q? It's a swab of her right earlobe. And what about 103R and S? R and S were little black hairs that I located on, for 103R, I'm sorry, it was a hair from her left pinky. I located a hair and collected that. And 103S is a hair from her right ring finger. Did you locate an additional hair from her right pinky that's 103T? I did. Okay. Um, did you clip some of her nails? Yes, ma'am. Okay, can you tell us about that? There were, we used a sterile nail clipper at the autopsy, and I collected, in this particular case, um, we, I just held a, a piece of paper underneath it, and we took, I clipped all of her nails as low as I could go with the nail clippers, and I collected an item for her left hand and an item for all of her right hand. Okay, and it states 103U, the nail clippings from her right hand? Yes, ma'am. And 103V is the nail clippings for her left hand? It is. All right, um, what is 103W? It was a projectile that was located in the top of her head. And uh, can you tell us about how um, you're not the person who's taking the projectiles from her body at an autopsy, right? No, ma'am. That's going to be the medical examiner. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, how do you go about getting these projectiles from the medical examiner? We actually have a form. The medical examiner has their own essential property receipt. So whatever they hand over to us, such as her clothing, the, the items, all of these items that I took from Brandy, they have on a, their property receipt that I signed saying that they gave it to me, the date and the time, and then I signed saying that I received it all and that I've taken it. Okay, so the medical examiner is taking these projectiles she's finding from her, um, from Brandy Peters, and she's giving them to you to be impounded into evidence at Tallahassee Police Department. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so you said 103W was a projectile found in the top of Brandy Peters' head? Yes, ma'am. And what is 103X? It's a projectile from the, her left chest wall. Okay, and 103Y? Was a projectile located on the left anterior abdominal wall. And 103Z? Is a projectile from the right side of her jaw. 103 AA? Is a projectile from the left upper arm of Brandy Peters and foreign material from a scalp wound. Okay. And what is 103 BB? It was hair that was located on the right sock of Brandy Peters at autopsy. And did you collect um, a number of items from the autopsy? I did. Okay. What is 103 CC? 
It should be uh, in a package in front of you. Oh, I'm sorry. That you have, sorry. I hid them all. 103 CC is the red and black wig that was um, taken off of Brandy's head. Okay, so after the medical examiner removed the wig, she gave it to you and you packaged it there in the packaging you have in front of you? Yes, ma'am. All right, and in another package there in front of you, what is 103 DD? Is the pair of socks that Brandy was wearing. Okay. Um, did you also impound uh, the clothing she was wearing on her torso and, and legs that day? Yes, ma'am. Um, can you tell us what those items are in 103 EE and FF? Oh, these are here. I'm sorry. This is 103 EE, and this is the yellow tank top, and it was a pink bra that Brandy was wearing at autopsy. Okay. she wearing um, on her legs? 103 FF are the black, or I'm sorry, are the blue jeans and the black underwear that she was wearing when we found her. All right, going back to uh, your notebook for just a second, did you process an item that came from Brandy Peters' mouth during the autopsy? I did, yes ma'am. Okay, and what is 103 GG? It was the tongue ring that I collected from her tongue. And what is 103 HH? This should be another package. This is the sexual assault kit that was taken by the medical examiner that I collected as evidence. Okay. And what is 103 II? I don't think that I have that. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't think that I have that. Okay, let me ask you about one more thing. Did you take a buckle swab from Brandy Peters um, during the autopsy? I did. Did you want her to answer your question about I, I, or are you withdrawing that? Um, did you take recorded prints of Brandy Peters? I did. Okay. Um, have you, did you have an opportunity to look at the recorded prints before court today? I did. Um, and were, were they in the same or substantially the same condition as when you impounded them? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I, you said that you don't see them up there in front of you? No, ma'am. Okay. We'll take a break in just a second and okay. I'll locate them. Um, I want to, uh, her recorded prints though, what are those? Uh, at the autopsy, I, I took recordings of her fingerprints and her palm prints for any kind of comparison purposes that we were going to need to do later in the investigation. So essentially what I did is, or what I do is I powder, I put powder on their hands and we have sticky tape that we take off and it goes onto a card to record the fingerprints for comparisons later. Okay, and you told us that's 103II? All right, and you said that you took a buckle swab of Brandy Peters. She had a, is not able to answer your question. I'm sorry, yeah, I didn't, oh, I didn't I'm sorry. Really remember. I, uh, but you did have an opportunity to look at it before court I did. today. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And when you saw it, it was in the same condition as when you impounded it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, all right, so looking at...
All right, so... We're look, about due for a break. One a minute to sort this out. Okay, that's fine. I mean, do you want to take a short break? That'll be fine. Okay, we'll take 10 minutes. Both my husband and I are from there, but I'm from a 